Right, thanks for staying with us on Best Stock and our for, uh, our topic for this week is actually Islamic economics and with me I have uh, Professor Muhammad Aslam Hanif which is on my right right now. He is a professor from the Department of Economics and Centre for Islamic e e Economics and on beside him we have uh, Dr. Saim Kaya Dibi and he is the Deputy Director of International Affairs Division and both of you are from IIUM. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Right, let's, uh, let's introduce uh, the guest for, for a moment. So Professor Haslam, what do you do there in IIUM? Thank you, Sue, for having us. Uh, firstly, um, I think both of us are coming from the Department of Economics. Right. And um, I teach Islamic economics courses. Okay. And I think the IIUM, especially our department, is probably the only department in, in, in Malaysia mm -hmm. that uh, has a dedicated undergraduate program in Islamic economics. Mm -hmm. In that sense, ever since the university was established in 1983, uh, we've been teaching um, Islamic economics, although our degree is called Bachelor of Economics, but right. based on the university philosophy, we actually do Islamic economics as well. Right, and Dr. Sain? Well, uh, and you're from uh, Turkey? Yes, I'm from Turkey and the city of Konya. Right. It's a very well known city. Uh, although I'm a uh, low backgrounded uh, Academician, I'm teaching in the same faculty, Faculty of Economics, mm -hmm. but law related to Islamic banking mm -hmm. and finance. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm teaching at the moment Usul al Fiqh, which is a, a principles of Islamic mm -hmm. law and Fiqh for economists. At the same time, uh, Sharia oriented public policy. Right. These are, of course, somehow related to Islamic banking, finance. So then, it's economic issues. All right. Okay. So. Let's. Uh, the reason why both of you are here is because of the second international conference on Islamic economics and economies of the OIC countries, which is going to be on the 29th and 30th January 2013. The venue will be at Prince Hotel and Restless Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Right. Before we go into the conference, can you tell me what is Islamic economies? Explain to me. I can put it in a very simple way. Right. You know, we've got um, problems that all societies need to solve. Mm -hmm. What to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce. These are the standard questions in economics. Mm -hmm. But all of these questions are tackled by different societies in different ways. And they have to be based on the values of the people in mm -hmm. that society. So when you talk about Islamic economics then, it's, it's the process of solving these problems, but doing so uh, within the guidelines of the Sharia, mm -hmm. which is meant to be a guideline for all Muslims, and in fact all humanity, right. because I think we look at the Sharia as something universal. Mm -hmm. So Islamic economics is basically addressing and solving economic problems, mm -hmm. but from within that Sharia framework. Alright, and uh, do you want to add That's anything to that? We might uh, briefly can say that it's a kind of uh, way of life of Muslim people mm -hmm. that their identity, their values can be put into the economic and financial issues. Right. So somehow then that's identity of Muslim we can say because we cannot separate ourselves from economic and finance issues mm -hmm. in our from our life. Right. And by saying that, what is the difference or the difference between Islamic economic system and the conventional system, probably, uh, Doctor? Well, uh, this I. We believe that Prof. Aslam, at the same time, he faced many, you know, challenges, challenges about these uh, questions, and some people think that there is there are no differences between them. Of course, there are differences. Mm -hmm. The difference, basically, the the process, the procedures, the method that uh, Islamic finance and economics are using. Right. Maybe the result would be the same, mm -hmm. but the result, the uh, the, the result that uh, come become out. come out the same doesn't mean that, that they, are, they are the same. Right. Uh, what would be the difference then? I mean, I mean if I can, again, mm -hmm. go into the essence of the issue. Right. You know, th you have these common problems. Yes. Different, different systems will resolve these problems differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The central, maybe, uh, main uh, difference between the two would be our sources of knowledge in order mm -hmm. to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. In Islamic economics, just as in 
in, in other areas of life, mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, to, to Muslims, we would have to be integrating knowledge that we will receive from revelation, mm -hmm. the Quran and the yes. Sunnah, yes. with knowledge that you will get from reason. So mm -hmm. in that sense, while there is similarity mm -hmm. in, 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 in the problems that we are facing, mm -hmm. but the interpretation of those problems and how you solve them will have to refer to this these sources that we have. Right. And that becomes, I think, the, the reason why, for example, we would say that a system that is having any elements of riba right. uh, interest, uh, usually, mm -hmm. this would not be acceptable. Yes. Whereas, you know, in conventional economics and finance, mm -hmm. uh, this is the dominating, uh, you know, almost uh, untouchable uh, institution. Yes. Inst and, and it's caused a uh, lot of damage, you know, in, in, in recent years, and mm -hmm. we've seen it. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, we are also now getting agreement from many quarters, even in the West, mm -hmm. criticizing the existing uh, mainstream economics, which uh, has greed at its, at its you know, foundation. Mm -hmm. And Islamic economics is certainly an economics, even from the word itself uh, in Arabic is iqtisad, mm -hmm. meaning moderation. Mm -hmm. So this idea of of, of, of greed being good okay. is something that you know would not be able to be accepted from an right. Islamic uh, you know, perspective and right. hence that's what makes the system different. Okay. In but addition to pro-Islam actually, mm -hmm. uh, Islamic economics, in conventional economic economics for example, you are earning money mm -hmm. and you are becoming cheap, uh, mm -hmm. rich for example, you do only for yourself. But in Islamic economics, you are not allowed to do business or economics issues only for yourself. You, you have to consider the society, yeah. okay. the others, uh -huh. the poor people. Uh -huh. Whatever you earn, for example, you have to give certain amount of that money right. that you have earned. Okay. So then the Islamic economics mostly consider whole people right. rather than only yourself. Okay. So that's why, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the better the, the, system. Yeah, the, okay. Yes. Right, before we continue with the questions and answers session, we have a package where we interview a few speakers. So let's take a look at the first speaker right now. The people when asking the whether the finance, uh, Islamic economists or Islamic banking finance can find a way to uh, fight with the financial crisis. To answer this question, actually, we have to know what's the root of the financial crisis so far. Because normally we can see what in simple words, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of factors, but uh, from what my point of view is, uh, this is two. One is the debt financing, another is what leveraging, uh, leveraging. So because the uh, conventional financial system, we are more based on the debt financing, which is based on interest, and of course debt financing will create more burden, and of course, and again due to the what the friction system of the commerce system, we can promote or accelerate the what, debt creation. As you know, the subprime crisis, there are more than 600 trillion of what? Uh, debt, uh, it was, uh, was the director's market. And here, but with uh, relative only 57 trillion of GDP of work. So there's more debt compared to the world real estate. But Islamic economies or finance, we are different because we are more in the concept of risk sharing rather than risk shifting. Because in conventional, they're trying to shift the risk to somebody else. Uh, to take, take advantage, but in Islamic, our concepts, we try to share the risk instead of shifting the risk. Again, we also in Islam, we are forbidden to have debt financing. So we are more on the equity-based financing. So that's why I say what? The solution to the financial crisis based on, we have to change the paradigm from risk shifting, debt financing to risk sharing and equity financing. Dr. Tokhan Ali, could you, I mean, could you explain uh, what will he be doing there in the conference? Well, he, he has a paper as um, almost 90 other paper presenters, right. um, half of them coming from uh, outside of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, and so he will be presenting a paper, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, he had a paper on, on the debt crisis yes. and some of his empirical findings right. on, you know, the causes and so on. Would you like to add uh, things to, to what he said, like, you know, what the difference between Islamic financing and the conventional one is that, uh, you know, instead of shipping it, we shed it. So, yeah. so this, this risk sharing is actually at the, 
at the you know at the at the base of of what maybe uh, Islamic economics stands for. Right. Um, and I think another very important part of what he was saying is that there has to be a, a very close uh, connection between the financial system and the real economic system. What you have in, in conventional economic system today is that the financial system is actually, you know, in a way, uh, taken over. Right. I mean, you, you're, if, even your starting point, you had a market report. Right. right? So you're talking about financial markets. <laughs> okay. And, and that is what seems to be given a lot of attention these days, financial yes. markets. Yes. But in Islamic economics, the financial system has to be related to the real economy because at the end of the day, what is the role of the financial system? Right. It has to be serving real economic activity. And so one of the problems of debt financing that you have in, 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 in conventional system mm -hmm. is that sometimes these um, uh, assets, you know, in inverted commas, mm -hmm. these assets that are being sold or shifted, uh, they don't have an underlying real asset. Right. And this creates, you know, a, a false um, a feeling that you're getting rich. And for many people, they were getting rich. Yes. Uh, but then when the bubble burst, you know, you, you have and this thing. And so in Islamic economics, the financial uh, markets have to be actually going hand in hand with the real economy. So in that sense, you're not going to be able to probably make those huge, you know, profits that you could make if it's just a financial market on its own. Mm -hmm. But it has to be connected. Right. I think, you know, John Maynard Keynes, if I can quote him, he has a very, very nice saying about this uh, phrase. Uh, money to the economy is like oil to the engine. Right. So it's the engine that is the important part, okay. and the oil, the lubricant system, has uh -huh. to make the engine move smoothly. Right. So money has to play this role, but you cannot give the financial system and make it as if it's it's the end all. Uh -huh. It has to serve the real economy, and right. I think that's that is actually uh, the reason why debt financing that you have in conventional system is actually very very um, volatile mm -hmm. and unstable. True. Okay. Uh, we'll take a short break right now, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue with the question and answer session right here on this talk.